spring bulk day three. It's Jay Cutler back at it again. We're going to do four sets, 12 repetitions today on everything. I usually always like swinging the weight and cheating the reps a little bit. I always responded better to uh, 12 repetitions and just swinging a little bit more. Anyway, guys, all kidding aside, I mean, I am Jay Cutler, right? I got the headband. I got kind of the hairstyle, too. But uh, today's freaking leg day, and uh, I know I usually start off my videos in the kitchen, but today breakfast was made for me, so there was no, you know, making it and showing the process. But long story short, I loaded it up on carbs. I had so many freaking carbs, it was unbelievable. Uh, probably a couple hundred grams. And I got uh, 30 grams of carbs waiting for me with an electrolyte mixture, liquid IV, inside of my giant uh, half gallon like uh, thermos to keep the water nice and cool. So it's gonna be a little bit freaky whenever I start drinking like sugary water in the middle of the gym sesh because I'm probably gonna be expecting normal water and when it tastes sweet, I'm gonna get like freaked out. But that's what you need, boys. On leg day, I find that I get so easily dehydrated. Uh, I, I always end up drinking all of the water uh, that I bring with me. And I mean, a half gallon during the workout, boys, that's it's a lot of water to drink in the span of like an hour and a half. So, uh, but I guess my point is, I figured if I'm that thirsty just for water, it would probably be a smart idea to have more electrolytes also. Plus, you get a ton of carbs in during the workout which i don't know if there's any science to that but having you know carbs during the workout a lot of bodybuilders do that they say it helps the pump i know i saw larry wheels do that a while back so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this little clip in the car and i will see you guys in the gym i always believed in training hard real stupid brutal hard warm up in. I feel a nice crispy stretch on my calves boys. Starting up with calf raises. I tried single leg last week but it like freaking hurt my uh, my tibia. You know this bone right on the inside like the shin area. Not the fibula. Not to be confused with the fibula. Okay. Take a hip width stance. Unrack it. Like an absolute boss. Get a full deep stretch because that's where the calves grow most. Boom. Boom. And guys, I always try to reinforce kind of training where muscles have best leverage, right? And calves happen to have the best leverage in the bottom half range of motion. How you doing, man? Good, man. Good to see you. Always train where muscles have best leverage, right? So the calves in studies have shown basically that they don't grow in the contracted position, right? They actually get smaller when you prioritize the squeeze and don't really get full range of motion, right? And when they compared training in the last half versus doing full range, so squeeze and full stretch versus training in the stretch position exclusively so that bottom half the stretch position group actually grew way more for calf raises specifically right so i'm not one of those people who goes oh bro you gotta just get the stretch man on everything i think the stretch is super overrated for a lot of the exercises but for calf raises it's severely underrated in my opinion if you're not growing in the calf department i would seriously consider changing your reps making them uh, a little bit slower like do not bounce at all right because the Achilles is a super strong tendon uh, strongest in your body and it tends to take over the load pretty easily right uh, but if you prioritize that bottom half range of motion spend a lot of time in that range and go heavy progressively overload your calves will grow certainly it won't just get stronger so all right let's freaking I'm ready to max the stack
All right, let's chuck a plate on. All right, so guys, we're throwing an extra plate on there. Like I said, it's just about the stretch, all right? For calf raises, specifically. So, oh. I hear Jay Cutler. He say he trains hard, boys. We gotta train hard like Jay Cutler. I, I mean, after all, I am Jay Cutler, so. Let's go. Boop. wasn't quite the failure and I started slipping a little bit but that was definitely an extremely high quality set my goodness Ooh. calf bumps already pretty tangible I got some veins poking out you guys can't see them on this side because the inner calf for me the inner calf is completely dominant so the outer calf is definitely developing but it does take time to get them to equal out so I never mess around with feet stances or foot stances on cab raises because, dude, let's be real. Yeah, you can bias one part over another, but just I would say just everybody has lacking calves for the most part. Most people are gonna, who are even thinking about changing their foot stance, have pretty weak calves. Just focus on getting them bigger in general. You don't need to focus on targeting a specific head. And by doing that, what I mean is, focus on where you're strongest. If you're doing kind of a self-limiting variation, like in my opinion, I'm much weaker doing calf raises whenever I rotate my feet in. If you're doing like that kind of self-limiting variation, your calves aren't gonna develop as strongly as if you just take a stance where you're strongest. So, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Take a stance where you're strongest. If you're a pencil neck, all right, and you're trying to get huge and jacked and succulent, what you need to do is just be strong, all right? So, I'm almost ready for this set. Reset. Oh, bro, I love when Jay Keller's talking about doing cardio and he's like, but I was also a beast. I was what they called a mash monster. All right, I got more. All right, we're moving on to, oh, actually, we're gonna keep going. I'm not moving on. I'm gonna take on some more hydration real quick. Let's think. Crazy is my muscle connection. I have ever felt in my calves. I know I already said that, but it's worth saying twice because it's that crazy. Hold on, let me shake this up a little bit. Electrolytes, intro workout might be a smart, one of the smartest things I'm doing. So we'll see how the effects of it are though. I firmly believe in high rest times. If you're not taking high rest times, dude, you're limiting your, your growth. All right, if you're a bodybuilder and you're interested in pure muscle growth, what you gotta do is make sure you're well rested enough to give it all you got, to give it a high effort. Now, 
I'm not saying you have to rest for 10 minutes, but you have to rest, in my opinion, at least minimum two minutes between sets. Because if you're not resting two minutes between sets, you're gonna lower your motor unit recruitment. Your power output's gonna be lower. And it's like, well, why do we, why do we optimize like everything else, like our diet and our sleep? But when it comes to your training, you're like, oh man, I'm just, I'm gonna take 30 seconds of rest because I just wanna blow through this workout. Like, no, give it everything you got. Low volume, high rest time, intense. Everything you got. You have to give it every ounce of your being. Rest pause. All right, I'm done. I should preface that I should not be able to do this weight, but the idea of doing it kind of scares me. So I'm just gonna do it. All right, that was way better than I thought it could be. Cats have the most insane pump they've ever had. Feel like you can see the vein there. That's pretty cool. Never had calf veins before. And if anybody denies the efficacy of my training approach, I would ask you to look at the measurement and say, huh, you know, it did increase a quarter inch while he was cutting. Yeah, my calves got bigger on the cut because my training works. I never had big calves naturally, ever. All right, let's lower the weight. Actually, I'm done. Woo. All right, we're gonna start off on one freaking 20. All right. Nice and equal on both sides. Whoever was on this machine last, thank you. Because oftentimes it's not even equal to start off. They'll have like one side with 30, and they'll have another side with like 15. All right, we'll make the jump. Last time I did these, the form was really, really good with 155. Oh. Oh. All right. 
Let's move on. Still moving through these warm ups pretty slow, so I want to speed it up. Ooh. All right, this is stupid heavy. But I want to just go get some aggression in, go stupid brutal heavy, get some high intensity, and uh, just make sure it feels good. Oh. That's it for this. Not a great range of motion, but like I said in yesterday's video, I like the idea of mastering a weight. Getting used to it, even though it's probably too heavy for you, right? And then over time, you gain the ability to have excellent form with that heavy weight is gonna yield some incredible gains. And in my experience, tested this theory it worked crazy well I went from always doing super strict form on everything to ego lifting basically on my back days just to see what would happen because my back sucked I had no back and then all of a sudden it blew up when I started just going heavier and getting a slight cheat in I'm not talking about I'm not talking about a tenth of the range of motion and, you know one rep i'm talking about a solid set of like six to eight okay sometimes even you might even get four but just mastering the form over time and that, that made my back get humongous compared to what it was before so i'm gonna keep doing that and apply it to everything man it works that training approach freaking works and it works well i'm gonna absolutely rip down 240. we did it actually it's 250 250, but I, I had it on 280 before, so. All right, I'm done for the day on the hamstring. I don't have to get insanely hyped to hit four plates anymore, which is super nice. Now I have to get insanely hyped at five.
All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna hit the ad doctor machine and we're gonna go pose and I'll head out. All right, boys. Where does Max have to hit that up there for one set? It got me insanely sore last time. So, once that's all I need. <sighs> all right, I think you guys can see that well. Get a couple more. Shh. Shh. Uh. All right. Uh. We're gonna wipe this down and hit the posing room, boys. All right, boys. We are in the posing room. Veins are freaking out. The hack squats felt surprisingly easy. I think it's because I lowered my volume before the hack squat. You know, I didn't do as many leg extensions, didn't do as many hard sets. Uh, and so I was able to do a little bit more. And plus I'm extremely carved up and I've been in a caloric surplus for probably, I mean, let's be real guys. I've been in a surplus for probably about a week. So even though the cut's only beneficial for three days, so. I'm gonna move this back ever so slightly. Don't worry, audience, I will put it back. Legs are so bumped they look blurry, which is kind of the goal. Oh, there it is. I think I finally figured it out.
the cash out position sensors. I'm just going to do it on my own. Oh, okay. How about your part? Huh? How about your Alright. I'm freaking done. Alright, boys. I don't know if you guys can see this super clearly, but I have a freaking cheeseburger from Red Robin and some potato chips with all kind of condiments under it, boys. We got the freaking, you know, we had the, we, we had to get the pickles, the lettuce, tomato, and the ketchup, and the mustard, and the mayonnaise, and all the good stuff, okay? And, um, we also got fish filet in a ciabatta roll, so that's the post-leg day meal. I'm going to enjoy the crap out of it. Thank God for the meal. And, um... I will see you guys tomorrow for freaking shoulder day. All right, take care.